Electoral reforms. He various committees and commissions which have examined our electoral system, election. Electoral Reforms Committees related to Electoral Reforms TE Various Committees and Commissions which have examined our electoral system, election machinery as well as election process and suggested reforms are mentioned here. One Joint Parliamentary Committee on Amendments to Election Laws, 1971-1972. Two Thakund Committee was appointed in 1974 by Jaya Prakash Narayan, JP, during his Total Revolution, movement. This, this official committee, committee submitted its report in 1975. Three Dinesh Goswami Committee on Electoral Reforms, 1990-14. Vohra Committee on the Nexus between Crime and Politics, 1993-5. Election Commission of India Recommendations on Electoral Reforms, 1998. Six Indrajit Gupta Committee on State Funding of Elections, 1998-27. Law Commission of India 170th Report on Reform of the Electoral Laws, 1999-8. National Commission to Review the Working of the Constitution, 2000-2002-3. It was headed by M. N. Venkatlia. 9 Election Commission of India Report on Proposed Electoral Reforms, 2004. 10 Second Administrative Reforms Commission of India Report on Ethics in Governance, Governance 2007. 2007. It was, it was headed by Veerappa Moli. 11 Tanka Committee, Core Committee, was appointed in 2010 to look into the whole gamut of the election laws and electoral reforms. 12 Jails Verma Committee Report on Amendments to Criminal Law, 2013. 13 Law Commission of India 244th Report on Electoral Disqualifications, 2014. 14 Law Commission of India 255th Report on Electoral Reforms, 2015. Based on the recommendations made by the above committees and commissions, various reforms have been introduced in our electoral system, election machinery and election process. These can be studied under the following four heads. Times electoral reforms before 1996 times electoral reforms of 1996 times electoral reforms after 1996 times electoral reforms since 2010 electoral reforms before 1996 lowering of voting age the 61st Constitutional Amendment Act of 19,884 reduced the voting age from 21 years to 18 years for the Lok Sabha as well as the Assembly elections. This was done in order to provide to the unrepresented youth of the country an opportunity to express their feelings and help them become a part of political process. Deputation to Election Commission in 19,885, a provision was made that the officers and the staff engaged in preparation, revision and correction of electoral rolls for elections are deemed to be on deputation to the Election Commission for the period of such employment. These personnel, during that period, would be under the control, superintendence and discipline of the Election Commission. Increase in number of proposers in 19,886, the number of electors who are required to sign as proposers in nomination papers for elections to the Rajya Sabha and State Legislative Council has been increased to 10% of the electors of the constituency or 10 such electors, whichever is less. This was done in order to prevent non-serious candidates from contesting frivolously. Electronic, Electronic voting, voting, voting machines in 19,897, a provision was made to facilitate the use of electronic voting, voting, voting machines, machines EVMs, EVMs, in elections. The EVMs were used for the first time in 1998 on experimental basis in selected constituencies in the elections to the assemblies of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Delhi. The EVMs were used for the first time in the general elections, entire state, to the assembly of Goa in 1999. Booth capturing in 19,898. A provision was made for adjournment of poll or countermanding of elections in case of booth capturing. Booth capturing includes I. 
seizure of the polling station and making polling authorities surrender ballot papers or voting machines, to taking possession of polling station and allowing only one's own supporters to exercise their franchise, 3. Threatening and preventing any elector from going to polling station and 4. Seizure of the place being used for counting of votes. Elector's photo identity card, EPIC. The use of elector's photo identity cards by the election commission is surely making the electoral process simple, smoother and quicker. A decision was taken by the election commission in 1993 to issue photo identity cards to electors throughout the country to check bogus voting and impersonation of electors at elections. The electoral roll is the basis for issue of epics to the registered electors. The electoral rolls are normally revised every year with 1st January of the year as the qualifying date. Every Indian citizen who attained the age of 18 years or above as on that date is eligible for inclusion in the electoral roll and can apply for the same. Once he is registered in the roll, he would be eligible for getting an EPIC. The scheme of issuing the EPICs is, therefore, a continuous and ongoing process for the completion of which no time limit can be fixed as the registration of electors is a continuous and ongoing process excepting for a brief period between the last date for filing nomination and completion of electoral process, on account of more number of persons becoming eligible for the right of franchise on attaining the age of 18. It is the continuous effort of the election commission to provide the epics to the electors who have been left out in the previous campaigns as well as the new electors.8 electoral reforms of 1996. In 1990, the National Front government headed by V.P. Singh appointed a committee on electoral reforms under the chairmanship of Dinesh Goswami, the then law minister. The committee was asked to study the electoral system in detail and suggest measures for remedying the drawbacks within it. The committee, in its report submitted in 1990 itself, made a number of proposals on electoral reforms. Some of these recommendations were implemented in 19,969. These are explained here. Listing of names of candidates. The candidates contesting elections are to be classified into three categories for the purpose of listing of their names. They are I. Candidates of recognized political parties. 2. Candidates of registered and recognized political parties. 3. Other. Independent candidates their names in the list of contesting candidates and in the ballot papers has to appear separately in the above order and in each category these have to be arranged in the alphabetical order. Disqualification for insulting the National Honor Act A person who is convicted for the following offenses under the Prevention of Insults to National Honor Act of 1971 is disqualified to contest in the elections to the Parliament and State Legislature for six years. I. Offense of insulting the national flag. 2. Offense of insulting the Constitution of India. 3. Offense of preventing the singing of national anthem prohibition on the sale of liquor no liquor or other intoxicants are to be sold or given or distributed at any shop, eating place, hotel or any other place whether public or private within a polling area during the period of 48 hours ending with the are fixed for the conclusion of poll. Any person who violates this rule is to be punished with imprisonment up to 6 months or with fine up to 2000 or with both. Number of proposers The nomination of a candidate in a parliamentary or assembly constituency should be subscribed by 10 registered electors of the constituency as proposers, if the candidate is not sponsored by a recognized political party. In the case of a candidate sponsored by a recognized political party, only one proposer is required. This was done in order to discourage. Non serious people from contesting the elections. Death of a candidate earlier, in case of death of a contesting candidate before the actual polling, the election used to be countermanded. Consequently, the election process had to start all over again in the concerned constituency. But now, the election would not be countermanded on the death of a contesting candidate before the actual polling. However, if the deceased candidate belonged to a recognized political party, the party concerned would be given an option to propose another candidate within seven days. Time limit for by-elections now, 
by elections are to be held within six months of occurrence of the vacancy in any House of Parliament or a state legislature. But, this condition is not applicable in two cases, i. where the remainder of the term of the member whose vacancy is to be filled is less than one year, or, two, when the election commission in consultation with the central government, certifies that it is difficult to hold the by-elections within the said period. Holiday to employees on the polling day the registered voters employed in any trade, business, industry or any other establishment are entitled to a paid holiday on the polling day. This rule applies even to the daily wages. Any employer who violates this rule is to be punished with a fine up to 500. However, this rule is not applicable in the case of a voter whose absence may cause danger or substantial loss in respect of the employment in which he is engaged. Contestants restricted to two constituencies a candidate would not be eligible to contest from more than two parliamentary or assembly constituencies at a general election or at the by-elections which are held simultaneously. Similar restrictions are imposed for biennial elections and by-elections to the Rajya Sabha and the state legislative councils. Prohibition of arms entering into the neighborhood of a polling station with any kind of arms 10 is to be considered a cognizable offense. Such an act is punishable with imprisonment of up to two years or with fine or with both. Further, the arms found in possession of the offender are to be confiscated and the related license is to be cancelled. But, these provisions are not applicable to the returning officer, presiding officer, any police officer or any other person appointed, appointed to maintain, maintain peace and order at the polling station. Effective campaigning period reduced the minimum gap between the last date for withdrawal of candidature and the polling date has been reduced from 20, 20 to 40 days. days. Electoral, Electoral reforms reform after 1996 presidential and vice presidential elections in 199711. The number of electors as proposers and seconders for contesting election to the office of the president was increased from 10 to 50 and to the office of the vice president from 5 to 20. Further. The amount of security deposit was increased from 2,500 to 15,000 for contesting election to both the offices of President and Vice President to discourage frivolous candidates. Requisitioning of staff for election duty in 199812, a provision was made whereby the employees of local authorities, nationalized banks, universities, LIC, Government undertakings and other government-aided institutions can be requisitioned for deployment on election duty. Voting through postal ballot in 199913, a provision was made for voting by certain classes of persons through postal ballot. Thus, any class of persons can be notified by the election commission, in consultation with the government, and the persons belonging to such notified class can give their votes by postal ballot, and not in any other manner, at elections in their constituency or constituencies. Facility to opt to vote through proxy in 200314. The facility to opt to vote through proxy was provided to the service voters belonging to the armed forces and members belonging to a force to which provisions of the Army Act apply. Such service voters who opt to vote through proxy have to appoint a proxy in a prescribed format and intimate the returning officer of the constituency. Declaration of criminal antecedents assets, etc., by candidates in 2003, the Election Commission issued an Order 15 directing every candidate seeking election to the Parliament or a state legislature to furnish on his nomination paper the information on the following matters. i. Whether the candidate has been convicted or acquitted or discharged in any criminal offense in the past, whether he she was imprisoned or fined. 2. Prior to six months of filing nomination, whether the candidate is accused in any pending case, of any offence punishable with imprisonment for two years or more, and in which charges were framed or cognizance was taken by a court, if so, the details thereof. 3. The assets, immovable, movable, bank balances, etc., of a candidate and his her spouse and that of dependents. 4. Liabilities, if any particularly whether there are any dues of any public financial institution or government. Dues, 
we, the educational qualifications of the candidate furnishing of any false information in the affidavit is now an electoral offence punishable with imprisonment up to six months or fine or both. Changes in Rajya Sabha elections, in 2003, the following two changes were introduced with respect to elections to the Rajya Sabha 16, i, domicile or residency requirement of a candidate contesting an election to the Rajya Sabha was removed. Prior to this, a candidate had to be an elector in the state from where he was to be elected. Now, it would be sufficient if he is an elector in any parliamentary constituency in the country. 2. Introducing open ballot system, instead of secret ballot system, for elections to the Rajya Sabha. This was done to curb cross-voting and to wipe out the role of money power during Rajya Sabha elections. Under the new system, an elector belonging to a political party has to show the ballot paper after marking his vote to a nominated agent of that political party. Exemption of travelling expenditure as per a provision of 200317. The travelling expenditure incurred by the campaigning leaders of a political party shall be exempted from being included in the election expenses of the candidate. Free supply of electoral rolls, etc. According to a 2003 provision 18, the government should supply, free of cost, the copies of the electoral rolls and other prescribed material to the candidates of recognised political parties for the Lok Sabha and Assembly elections. Further. The Election Commission should supply specified items to the voters in the constituencies concerned or to the candidates set up by the recognized political parties. Parties entitled to accept contribution in 200319, the political parties were entitled to accept any amount of contribution from any person or company other than a government company. They have to report any contribution in excess of 20,000 to the Election Commission for making any claim to any income tax relief. Besides, the, the companies, companies would get, get income tax exemption on the amount contributed. Allocation of time on electronic media under a 2003 Provision 20, the Election Commission should allocate equitable sharing of time on the cable television network and other electronic media during elections to display or propagate any matter or to address public. This allocation would be decided on the basis of the past performance of a recognized political party. Introduction of Braille signage features in EVMs The Commission received representations from the various associations of visually impaired persons for introduction of Braille signage features in the EVMs to facilitate the visually impaired voters to cast their votes without the help of attendant. The Commission considered the proposal in detail and tried the Braille signage feature in the EVMs during the by-election to the Asifnagar Assembly constituency of Andhra Pradesh held in 2004. In 2005, it was tried in one of the constituency during the Assembly elections of Bihar, Dharkand and Haryana. In 2006, it was tried in one of the constituency of the states of Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Kerala during assembly elections. In 2008, it was tried in all the assembly constituencies of NCT of Delhi during assembly elections. The commission introduced similar braille signage features on the electronic voting machines during the general elections to the 15th Lok Sabha, 2009 and simultaneous assembly elections in some states. 20 electoral reforms since 2010 restrictions imposed on exit polls according to a 2009 provision 21. Conducting exit polls and publishing results of exit polls would be prohibited during the election to Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies. Thus, no person shall conduct any exit poll and publish or publicize by means of the print or electronic media or disseminate in any other manner. The result of any exit poll during the period notified by the Election Commission in this regard. Further, Further any, any person, person who contravenes this provision shall be punishable with imprisonment of up to two years or with fine or with both. Exit poll is an opinion survey regarding how electors have voted at an election or how all the electors have performed with regard to the identification of a political party or candidate in an election. Time limit for submitting a case for disqualification in 200922, a provision was made for the simplification of the procedure for disqualification of a person found guilty of corrupt practices. 
it provided for a three month time limit within which the specified authority will have to submit the case of a person found guilty of corrupt practice to the president for determination of the question of disqualification. All officials included in corrupt practice in 200923, a provision was made for the inclusion of all officials, whether in the government service or not, appointed or deputed by the election commission in connection with the conduct of elections within the scope of corrupt practice of obtaining any assistance by a candidate for the furtherance of the prospects of his election. Increase in security, security deposit, deposit in 200924. The amount of security deposit to be paid by the candidates contesting elections to the Lok Sabha was increased from 10,000 to 25,000 for the general candidates and from 5,000 to 12,500 for SC and SENT candidates. Similarly, the security deposit in the case of elections to the State Legislative Assembly was increased from 5,000 to 10,000 for the general candidates and from 2,500 to 5,000 for the SC and SENT candidates. This was done in order to check the multiplicity of non-serious candidates. Appellate authority within the district in 200925. A provision was made for appointment of an appellate authority within the district against the orders of the electoral registration officers, instead of the chief electoral officer of the state. Thus, an appeal against any order of the electoral registration officer of a constituency, during continuous updation of the electoral roll, will now lie before the district magistrate or additional district magistrate or executive magistrate or district collector or an officer of equivalent rank. A further appeal against any order of the district magistrate or additional district magistrate will now lie before the chief electoral officer of the state. Voting rights to citizens of India living abroad in 201026, a provision was made to confer voting rights to the citizens of India residing outside India due to various reasons. Accordingly, every citizen of India, a whose name is not included in the electoral roll, b, who has not acquired the citizenship of any other country, c, who is absent from his place of ordinary residence in India owing to his employment, education or otherwise outside India, whether temporarily or not, shall be entitled to have his name registered in the electoral roll in the parliamentary assembly constituency in which his place of residence in India as mentioned in his passport is located. Online enrollment in the electoral roll in 2013, a provision was made for online filing of applications for enrollment in the electoral roll. For this purpose, the general government, after consulting the election commission, made the rules known as the Registration of the Electors, Amendment, Rules, 2013.27 These rules made certain amendments in the Registration of Electors Rules, 1960. Introduction of nota option according to the directions of Supreme Court, the Election Commission made provision in the ballot papers EVMs for none of the above, nota, option so that the voters who come to the polling booth and decide not to vote for any of the candidates in the fray, are able to exercise their right not to vote for such candidates while maintaining the secrecy of their ballot. The provision for nota has been made since general election to state <coughs> legislative <coughs> assemblies of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Mizoram, NCT of Delhi and Rajasthan in 2013 and continued in the general election to state legislative assemblies of Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Odisha and Sikkim in 2014 along with the general elections to the 16th Lok Sabha, 2014. 2014.28 The voters polled against the nota option are not taken into account for calculating the total valid voters polled by the Contesting candidates for the purpose of return of security deposits to candidates. Even if the number of electors opting for nota options is more than the number of votes polled by any of the candidates, the candidate who secures the largest number of votes has to be declared elected. 29 In 2001, the ECI had sent a proposal to the government to amend the law so as to provide for a neutral vote provision for the electors who did not wish. to vote for any of the candidates. In 2004, PUT, People's Union for Civil Liberties, filed a petition seeking a direction to provide the necessary provision in ballot papers and EVMs for protection of the right to not vote for any candidate, secretly. 
The Supreme Court in 2013 held that the ECI may provide for the none of the above. Nota. Option on EVMs and ballot papers. 30 Introduction of PER. The voter verifiable paper audit trail is an independent system attached with the EVMs that allows the voters to verify that their votes are cast as intended. When a vote is cast, a slip is printed and remains exposed through a transparent window for 7 seconds, showing the serial number, name and symbol of the candidate. Thereafter, the receipt automatically gets cut and falls into the sealed drop box of the pet. The system allows a voter to challenge his her vote on the basis of the paper received. As per rules, the presiding officer of the polling booth will have to record the dissent of the voter, which would have to be taken into account at the time of counting, if the challenge is found to be false.31 The law for using VVPATs was amended in 2013. In 2013, the Supreme Court of India had permitted the ECI to introduce FAT in a phased manner, calling it an indispensable requirement of free and fair elections. The court had felt that introducing PET would ensure the accuracy of the voting system and also help in manual counting of votes in case of dispute. VVPATs were first used in by-election to the Noksane Assembly constituency of Nagaland held in 2013. Thereafter, VVPATs have been used in selected constituencies during every general election to state legislative assemblies. VVPATs were used in eight selected parliamentary constituencies in the country in the 2014 Lok Sabha election. election. EVMs with PET ensure the accuracy and transparency of the voting system. 32 persons in jail or police custody can contest elections in 2013. 33 The Supreme Court upheld an order of the Patna High Court declaring that a person who has no right to vote by reason of being in jail or in police custody is not an elector and is therefore, not qualified to contest the elections to the parliament or the state legislature. In order to negate this order of the Supreme Court, the following two new provisions 34 have been included in the Representation of the People Act, 1951. I, the first pro... Vision expressly provides that by reason of the prohibition to vote, either due to in jail or in police custody, a person whose name has been entered in the electoral roll shall not cease to be an elector. 2. The second provision expressly provides that a member of parliament or the state legislature shall be disqualified only if he is so disqualified under the provisions contained in the Act and on no other ground. Consequently, the persons in jail or in police custody are allowed to contest the elections. Immediate disqualification of convicted MPs and MLAs in 2013, 35 The Supreme Court held that charge sheeted members of parliament and MLAs, on conviction for offences, will be immediately disqualified from holding membership of the House without being given three months time for appeal, as was the case before. The concerned bench of the court struck down as unconstitutional Section 8, 4, of the Representation of the People Act, 1951, that allows convicted lawmakers a three-month period for filing appeal to the higher court and to get a stay of the conviction and sentence. The bench, however, made it clear that the ruling will be prospective and those who had already filed appeals in various high courts or the Supreme Court against their convictions would be exempt from it. The bench said, a reading of the two provisions in Articles 102 and 191 of the Constitution would make it abundantly clear that Parliament is to make one law for a person to be disqualified for being chosen as, and for being, a member of either House of Parliament or Legislative Assembly or Legislative Council of the State. Parliament thus does not have the power under Articles 102 and 191 of the Constitution to make different laws for a person to be disqualified for being chosen as a member and for a person to be disqualified for continuing as a member of Parliament or the State Legislature. The bench said, Section 8, 4, of the Act which carves out a saving in the case of sitting members of Parliament or State Legislature from the disqualifications under the Act or which differs the date on which the disqualification will take effect in the case of a sitting member of Parliament or a State Legislature is beyond the powers conferred on Parliament by the Constitution. The, the bench held.
Looking at the affirmative terms of Articles 102 and 191 of the Constitution, we hold that Parliament has been vested with the powers to make law laying down the same disqualifications for person to be chosen as a member of Parliament or a state legislature and for a sitting member of a House of Parliament or a House of a state legislature. We also hold that the provisions of Article 101 and 190 of the Constitution expressly prohibit Parliament to defer the date from which the disqualification will come into effect in case of a sitting member of Parliament or a state legislature. Parliament, therefore, has exceeded its powers conferred by the Constitution in enacting subsection 4 of Section 8 of the Act and accordingly subsection 4 of Section 8 of the Act is ultra vires the Constitution 36. In order to nullify the above ruling of the Supreme Court, the representation of the people, Second Amendment and Validation, Bill, 2013 was introduced in the Parliament. However, the bill was later withdrawn by the government. Ceiling on election expenditure increased in 201437, the central government raised the maximum ceiling on election expenditure by candidates for a Lok Sabha seat in bigger states to 70 lakhs, from earlier 40 lakhs. In other states and union territories, it is 54 lakhs, from earlier 16 to 40 lakhs. Similarly, the limit for an assembly seat in the bigger states was increased to 28 lakhs, from earlier 16 lakhs. In other states and union territories, it is 20 lakhs from earlier 8 to 16 lakhs. The state-wise limits are mentioned in Table 71.1 at the end of this chapter. Photos of candidates on EVMs and ballot papers according to an election commission order, in any election being held after 1st May 2015, the ballot papers and EVMs will carry the picture of the candidate with his or her name and party symbol to avoid confusion among the electorates in constituencies where namesakes are contesting. The June 2015 by polls to six seats in five states were the first elections where photographs of candidates were used on ballot papers. The Commission has noted that there are many cases where candidates with same or similar names contest from the same constituency. Although appropriate suffixes are added to the names of candidates in the event of two. Or more candidates having same name. The Commission considers that additional measures are required for removing confusion in the minds of electors at the time of voting. The photograph will appear between the name of the candidate and his or her election symbol. The Commission explained that if a candidate fails to provide the photograph, it shall not be a ground for the rejection of the nomination of the candidate. The candidates will now be required to submit their recent photograph, either black and white or colored, to the election authorities at the time of filing nomination. No uniforms would be allowed and caps and dark glasses have to be avoided. 38 Table 71.1 Limit on Election Expenditure, as declared in 2014, SL No. Name of state or union territory maximum limit of election expenses in any one parliamentary constituency assembly constituency I states 1 Andhra Pradesh 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 2 Arunachal Pradesh 54 lakhs 20 lakhs 3 Assam 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 4 Bihar 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 5 Goa 54 lakhs 20 lakhs 6 Gujarat 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 7 Haryana 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 8 Himachal Pradesh 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 9 in Jammu and Kashmir 70 lakhs. 10 Karnataka 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 11 Kerala 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 12 Madhya Pradesh 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 13 Maharashtra 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 14 Manipur 70 lakhs 20 lakhs 15 Meghalaya 70 lakhs 20 lakhs 16 Mizoram 70 lakhs 20 lakhs 17 Nagaland 70 lakhs 20 lakhs 18 Odisha 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 19 Punjab 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 20 Rajasthan 70 lakhs 28 lakhs lakhs 21 Sikkim 54 lakhs 20 lakhs 22 Tamil Nadu 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 23 Tripura 70 lakhs 20 lakhs 24 Uttar Pradesh 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 25 West Bangalore 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 26 Chhattisgarh 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 27 Uttarakhand 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 28 Lakhand 70 lakhs 28 lakhs 2
Union Territories 1 Andaman and Nicobar Islands 54 lakhs. Two Chandigarh 54 lakhs, three Dadra and Nagar Haveli 54 lakhs, four Daman and Diu 54 lakhs, five Delhi 70 lakhs, 28 lakhs, six Lakshadweep 54 lakhs, seven Puducherry 54 lakhs, 20 lakhs. Notes and references 1. C. Electoral reforms of 1996, discussed later in this chapter. 2. In 1998, the BJP led government appointed an eight member committee on state funding of elections under the chairmanship of Indrajit Gupta, a former Home Minister. The committee submitted its report in 1999. It upheld the argument for introduction of state funding of elections. It stated that state funding of elections is constitutionally and legally justified and is in public interest. Three for recommendations of the Commission in this regard, see Chapter 76. For this came into force on 28 March 1989. Consequently, amendments were also made in the Representation of the People Act of 1950 and 1951. Five Representation of the People, Amendment, Act of 1988. Six Ibid. Seven Amendment to the Representation of the People Act of 1951 with effect from 15 March 1989. 8 Section 58 8 has been inserted in the Representation of the People Act of 1951 by Act 1 of 1989. 8 A Annual Report 2013-14, Ministry of Law and Justice, Government of India, P.67. 9 Representation of the People, Amendment, Act, 1996, with effect from 1st August 1996. 10 As defined in Arms Act. 1959. 11 Presidential and Vice Presidential Elections, Amendment, Act, 1997. 12 Representation of the People, Amendment, Act, 1998. 13 Representation of the People, Amendment, Act, 1999. Forty election laws, Amendment, Act, 2003 and Conduct of Elections, Amendment, Rules, 2003. Fifteen order dated 27 March 2003. Sixteen representation of the people, Amendment, Act, 2003. Seventeen election and other related laws, Amendment, Act, 2003. Eighteen Ibit. Nineteen Ibit. 20 Ibit. 208 Election Commission of India Circular dated 12th February 2009. 12th February. 21 Representation of the People, Amendment, Act, 2009, with effect from 1st February 2010. 22 Ibit. 23 Ibit. 24 Ibit. 25 Ibit. 26 Representation of the People, Amendment, Act, 2010, with effect from 10 February 2011. 27. The amendment was notified by SO 3242, e, dated 24 October 2013. 28. Electoral Statistics, Pocket Book 2015, Election Commission of India, P.96. 29. Ibid. 30. India Votes. The General Elections 2014, Election Commission of India, P.18. 31 Ibid. 32 Ibid. 33 Chief Election Commissioner vs. Jan Chokida, 2013. 34 Wide the Representation of the People, Amendment and Validation, Act, 2013. 35 Lily Thomas vs. Union of India and Lok Prahari vs. Union of India. 2013. 36. The Hindu, MPs, MLAs to be disqualified on date of criminal conviction, 10th July 2013. 37. Conduct of election rules, 1961 as amended in 2014, with effect from 28 February 2014. 38. The Economic Times, electronic voting machines to carry photos of. Candidates, CC, 9th September 2015.
Anti-defection law the 52nd Amendment Act of 1985 provided for the disqualification of the members of parliament and the state legislatures on the ground of defection from one political party to another. For this purpose, it made changes in four articles, one of the constitution and added a new schedule, the 10th schedule, to the constitution. constitution. This, this act, act is often referred to as the anti defection law. Later, the 91st Amendment Act of 2003 made one change in the provisions of the 10th schedule. It omitted an exception provision i.e., disqualification on ground of defection not to apply in case of split. Provisions of the Act The 10th Schedule contains the following provisions with respect to the disqualification of members of Parliament and the state legislatures on the ground of defection. 1. Disqualification members of political parties. A member of a house belonging to any political party becomes disqualified for being a member of the house. A. If he voluntarily gives up his membership of such political party. Or. B. If he votes or abstains from voting in such house contrary to any. Direction issued. By, by this political, political party without, without obtaining prior permission of such party and such act has not been condoned by the party within 15 days. From, from the above provision, provision it is clear that, that a member elected on the party ticket should continue in the party and obey the party directions. Independent members, an independent member of a house, elected without being set up as a candidate by any political party, becomes disqualified to remain a member of the house if he joins any political party after such election. Nominated members, a nominated member of a house becomes disqualified for being a member of the house if he joins any political party after the expiry of six months from the date on which he takes his seat in the house. This means that he may join any political party within six months of taking his seat in the house without inviting this disqualification. Two exceptions, the above disqualification on the ground of defection does not apply in the following two cases. A. If a member goes out of his party as a result of a merger of the party with another party. A merger takes place when two-thirds of the members of the party have agreed to such merger. B. If a member, after being elected as the presiding officer of the house, voluntarily gives up the membership of his party or rejoins it after he ceases to hold that office. This exemption has been provided in view of the dignity and impartiality of this office. It must be noted here that the provision of the 10th schedule pertaining to exemption from disqualification in case of split by one-third members of legislature party has been deleted by the 91st Amendment Act of 2003. It means that the defectors have no more protection on grounds of splits. 3. Deciding authority Any question regarding disqualification arising out of defection is to be decided by the presiding officer of the House. Originally. The Act provided that the decision of the presiding officer is final and cannot be questioned in. Any court. court. However, in, in Kimoto Holohan case 2, 1993, the Supreme Court declared this provision as unconstitutional on the ground that it seeks to take away the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and the High Courts. It held that the presiding officer, while deciding a question under the 10th schedule, functioned as a tribunal. Hence, his decision like that of any other tribunal, is subject to judicial review on the grounds of mala fides, perversity, etc. But, the court rejected the contention that the vesting of adjudicatory powers in the presiding officer is by itself invalid on the ground of political bias 3. For rulemaking power the presiding officer of a house is empowered to make rules to give effect to the provisions of the 10th schedule. All such rules must be placed before the house for 30 days. The house may approve or modify or disapprove them. Further, he may direct that any willful contravention by any member of such rules may be dealt with in the same manner as a breach of privilege of the house. According to the rules made so, the presiding officer can take up a defection case only when he receives a complaint from a member of the house. Before taking the final decision, he must give the member, against whom the complaint has been made, a chance to submit his explanation. He may also refer the matter to the Committee of Privileges for inquiry. Hence, defection has no immediate and automatic effect.
Evaluation of the Act, the 10th schedule of the Constitution, which embodies the anti-defection law, is designed to prevent the evil or mischief of political defections motivated by the lure of office or material benefits or other similar considerations. It is intended to strengthen the fabric of Indian parliamentary democracy by curbing unprincipled and unethical political defections. Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister, described it as the first step towards cleaning up public life. The then Central Law Minister stated that the passing of the 52nd Amendment Bill, Anti-Defection Bill, by a unanimous vote by both the Houses of Parliament was a proof, if any, of the maturity and stability of Indian democracy. Advantages, advantages the following can, can be cited as the advantages of the anti-defection law. A. It provides for greater stability in the body politic by checking the propensity of legislators to change parties. B. It, it facilitates, facilitates democratic, democratic realignment of parties in the legislature by way of merger of parties. C. It reduces corruption at the political level as well as non-developmental expenditure incurred on irregular elections. D. It gives, for the first time, a clear-cut constitutional recognition to the existence of political parties. Criticism though the anti-defection law been hailed as a bold step towards cleansing our political life and started as new epoch in the political life of the country, it has revealed male lacuna in its operation and failed to prevent defections in toto. It came to be criticized on the following grounds. 1. It does not make a differentiation between dissent and defection. It curbs the legislator's right to dissent and freedom of conscience. Thus, it clearly puts party bossism on a pedestal and sanctions tyranny of the party in the name of the party discipline for. To its distinction between individual defection and group defection is irrational. In other words, it banned only retail defections and legalized wholesale defections 5. 3. It does not provide for the expulsion of a legislator from his party for his activities outside the legislature. For its discrimination between an independent member and a nominated member is illogical. If the former joins a party, he is disqualified while the latter is allowed to do the same. 5. Its vesting of decision-making authority in the presiding officer is criticized on two grounds. Firstly, he may not exercise this authority in an impartial and objective manner due to political exigencies. Secondly, he lacks the legal knowledge and experience to adjudicate upon the cases. In Fact, Fact. Two, two speakers, speakers of, of the Lok Sabha, Sabha Rabi Ray, 1991 and Shidraj Patil, 1993, have themselves expressed doubts on their suitability to adjudicate upon the cases related to defection 6. 91 Cent Amendment Act, 2003, reasons the reasons for enacting the 91st Amendment Act, 2003, are as follows. One demands have been made from time to time in certain quarters for strengthening and amending the anti-defection law as contained in the 10th schedule, on the ground that these provisions have not been able to achieve the desired goal of checking defections. The 10th schedule has also been criticized on the ground that it allows bulk defections while declaring individual defections as illegal. The provision for exemption from disqualification in case of splits as provided in the 10th schedule has, in particular, come under severe criticism on account of its destabilizing effect on the government. To the Committee on Electoral Reforms, Vinish Goswami Committee, in its report of 1990, the Law Commission of India in its 170th Report on Reform of Electoral Laws, 1999, and the National Commission to Review the Working of the Constitution, NCRWC, in its Report of 2002 have, inter alia, recommended omission of the provision of the 10th Schedule pertaining to exemption from disqualification in case of splits. 3. The NCRWC was also of the view that a defector should be penalized for his action by debarring him from holding any public office as a minister or any other remunerative political post for at least the duration of the remaining term of the existing legislature or until the next fresh elections whichever is earlier. 
For the NCRWC has also observed that abnormally large councils of ministers were being constituted by various governments at centre and states and this practice had to be prohibited by law and that a ceiling on the number of ministers in a state or the union government be fixed at the maximum of 10% of the total strength of the popular house of the legislature. Provisions The 91st Amendment Act of 2003 has made the following provisions to limit the size of Council of Ministers, to debar defectors from holding public offices, and to strengthen the anti-defection law, 1. The total number of ministers, including the Prime Minister, in the Central Council of Ministers shall not exceed 15% of the total strength of the Lok Sabha, Article 75. To a member of either House of Parliament belonging to any political party who is disqualified on the ground of defection shall also be disqualified to be appointed as a minister, Article 75. 3. The total number of ministers, including the chief minister, in the Council of Ministers in a state shall not exceed 15% of the total strength of the Legislative Assembly of that state. But, the number of ministers, including the chief minister, in a state shall not be less than 12, Article 164. For a member of either house of a state legislature belonging to any political party who is disqualified on the ground of defection shall also be disqualified to be appointed as a minister, Article 164. 5. A member of either House of Parliament or either House of a State Legislature belonging to any political party who is disqualified on the ground of defection shall also be disqualified to hold any remunerative political post. The expression, remunerative political post, means, I, any office under the central government or a state government where the salary or remuneration for such office is paid out of the public revenue of the concerned government, or, to, any office under a body, whether incorporated or not, which is wholly or partially owned by the central government or a state government and the salary or remuneration for such office is paid by such body, except where such salary or remuneration paid is. Compensatory in nature, Article 361-B. 6. The provision of the 10th Schedule, Anti-Defection Law, pertaining to exemption from disqualification in case of split by one-third members of legislature party has been deleted. It means that the defectors have no more protection on grounds of splits. Notes, Notes and references, references 1. These are Articles 101, 102, 190 and 191 which relate to the vacation of seats and disqualification from membership of parliament and the state legislatures. 2. Kehoto Holohan Wizachai Lu. 1993. 3. The observed. The chairman or speakers hold a pivotal position in the scheme of parliamentary democracy and are guardians of the rights and privileges of the House. They are expected to and do take far-reaching decisions in the functioning of parliamentary democracy. Vestiture of power to adjudicate questions under the 10th schedule in such constitutional functionaries should not be considered unexceptionable. 4. Soli J. Sorabji. The remedy should not be worse than the disease. The Times of India, Sunday Review, 1st February 1985, P1. 5. Madhu Limye, Contemporary Indian Politics, 1989, P190. 6. Speaker Shivraj Patil stated, The advantages in giving these cases to the judiciary are many. The speaker or the chairman may or may not be endowed with legal acumen and proficiency in law. It is more APT to have the cases decided by the Supreme Court or High Court judges. Pressure, pressure groups meaning, meaning and techniques see term, pressure, pressure group, originated in the USA. A pressure group is a group of people who are organized actively for promoting and defending their common interest. It is so called as it attempts to bring a change in the public policy by exerting pressure on the government. It acts as a liaison between the government and its members. The pressure groups are also called interest groups or vested groups. They are different from the political parties in that they neither contest elections nor try to capture political power. 
They are concerned with specific programs and issues and their activities are confined to the protection and promotion of the interests of their members by influencing the government. The pressure groups influence the policy making and policy implementation in the government through legal and legitimate methods like lobbying, correspondence, publicity, propagandizing, petitioning, public debating, maintaining contacts with their legislators and so forth. However, sometimes they resort to illegitimate and illegal methods like strikes, violent activities and corruption which damages public interest and administrative integrity. According to Odegaard, pressure groups resort to three different techniques in securing their purposes. First, they can try to place in public office persons. who are favorably disposed towards the interests they seek to promote. This technique may be labeled electioneering. Second, they can try to persuade public officers, whether they are initially favorably disposed toward them or not, to adopt and enforce the policies that they think will prove most beneficial to their interests. This technique may be labeled lobbying. Third, they can try to influence public opinion and thereby gain an indirect influence over government, since the government in a democracy is substantially affected by public opinion. This technique may be labeled propagandizing one. Pressure groups in India A large number of pressure groups exist in India. But, they are not developed to the same extent as in the US or the Western countries like Britain, France, Germany and so on. The pressure groups in India can be broadly classified into the following categories. 1. Business groups The business groups include a large number of industrial and commercial bodies. They are the most sophisticated, the most powerful and the largest of all pressure and groups in India. India. They include I, I, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FICSI. Major constituents are the Indian Merchants Chamber of Bombay. Indian Merchants Chamber of Calcutta and South Indian Chamber of Commerce of Madras. It broadly represents it major industrial, it represents and major industrial Two, Associated, Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry of India, Asocham. Major constituents are the Bangoil Chamber of Commerce of Calcutta and Central Commercial Organization of Delhi. Asocham represents foreign British capital. 3. Federation of All India Food, Food Grain Dealers, Dealers Association, FAFDA. FAFDA is the sole representative of the grain dealers. 4. All India Manufacturers Organization, AIMO. AIMO raises the concerns of the medium-sized industry. Two trade unions. The trade unions voice the demands of the industrial workers. They are also known as labor groups. A peculiar feature of trade unions in India is that they are associated either directly or indirectly with different political parties. They include I. All India Trade Union Congress, ATAC, affiliated to CPI, 2. Indian National Trade Union Congress, INTAC, affiliated to the Congress, I. 3. Hind Mazdoor Sabha, HMS, affiliated to the Socialists, 4. Center of Indian Trade Unions, SITO, Affiliated to the CPM, we, Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh, BMS, affiliated to the BJP, 6, All India Central Council of Trade Unions, Communist Party of India, Marxist Leninist, Liberation, 7, All India United Trade Union Centre, Socialist, Unity Centre of India, Communist, 8, New Trade Union Initiative, Independent from political parties, but left, but left. No. 9. Labour Progressive Federation, Dravida Munnekra Kazhagam, Kiss Smiley Trade, Trade Union Union Coordination Union. Committee, All India Forward Bloc, 11. United Trade Union Congress, Revolutionary Socialist Party, 12. All India Centre of Trade Unions, Marxist Communist Party of India, United, 13. Anna Fosheel Sangha Pehli, All, All India Anna Dravida Munnekra Kazhagam, 14. Bharatiya Kanga, Sena, Shiv Sena, 15, Hind Mazdur Kisan Panchayat, Janata Dal, United, 16, Indian Federation of Trade Unions, 
Communist Party of India Marxist Leninist New Democracy 17 Indian National Trinamool Trade Union Congress All India Trinamool Congress 18 Patali Trade Union Patali Makal Gachi 9 Swatan Krakos Hilali Union Indian Union Muslim League and XX Kelugu Nehru Trade Union Council Kelugu Desam Party First trade union in India, the Odia Trade Union Congress was founded in 1920 with Lala Lajpat Rai as its first president. Up to 1945, congressmen, socialists and communists worked in the ATAP which was the central trade union organization of, of workers of India. Subsequently, the trade union movement got split on political lines. Three agrarian groups, the agrarian groups represent the farmers and the agricultural labor class. They include I. Vakil Kisan Union, under the leadership of Mahendra Singh Tikate, in the wheat belt of North India, to All India Kisan Sabha, the oldest and the largest agrarian group, 3. Revolutionary Peasants Convention, organized by the CPM in 1967 which gave birth to the Naxalbari movement, 4. Varti Kisan Sun, Gujarat, we are we Sangam, led by C. N. Naidu in Nadu, Nadu. Se, 6, Shekhari Sangatana, led by Shara Joshi in Maharashtra, 7, Hind Kisan Panchayak, controlled by the Socialists, 8, All India Kisan Sammelan, led by Raj Narain, 9, United Kisan Sabha, controlled by the CPM, 4, Professional associations, these are associations that raise the concerns and demands of doctors, lawyers, journalists and teachers. Despite various restrictions, these associations pressurize the government by various methods including agitations for the improvement of their service conditions. They include I. Indian Medical Association, IMA, 2. Bar Council of India, BCI, 3. Indian Federation of Working Journalists, IFWJ, 4, All India Federation of University and College Teachers, Effort, 5, Student Organizations, Various Unions have been formed to represent the student community. However, these unions, like the trade unions, are also related to various political parties. These are, I, Akila Bharti Vidyati Parishad, ABVP, affiliated to BJP, 2, All India Students Federation, AISF, affiliated to CPI, 3, National Students Union of India, NSUI, affiliated to Congress, I, 4, Progressive Students Union, PSU, affiliated to CPM, 6, Religious organizations, the organizations based on religion have come to play an important role in Indian politics. They represent a narrow communal interest. interest. They include I. Rashtri Swayam Rashtri Swayam RSS, RSS 2, 2 Vishwa Hindu Parishad VHP 3, 3 Jamaki Islami 4, 4 Itahadu Musulmin We and Low Indian, Low Indian Association, Association 6, 6 Associations, Associations of the Roman, Roman Catholics, Catholics 7, 7 All India All Conference of Indian Christians, Christians 8, 8 Parsi Central, Central Association, Association 9, 9 Shiromi Akli Dal the Shiromi Akli Dal should be regarded as more of a religious pressure group rather than a political party in view of the fact that it has been concerned more with the mission of saving the Sikh community from being absorbed into the ocean of Hindu society than with fighting for the cause of a Sikh homeland. Seven caste groups like religion, caste has been, has been an important factor in Indian politics. The an important politics in many states of the Indian Union is in fact the politics of caste rivalries, Brahman versus non-Brahman in Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra, Rajput versus Jha in Rajasthan, Kamma versus Reddy in Andhra, Ahir versus Jha in Haryana, Baniya Brahman versus Partida in, in Gujarat, Kalista versus Rajput in Bihar, Naya versus Ezhava in Kerala and Lingayak versus Okaliga in Karnataka 3. Some of the caste based. Organizations are I. Nada Caste Association in Tamil Nadu, 2. Marwadi Association, 3. Harijan Sevak Sangh, 4. Kshatri Mahasabha in Gujarat, we, 
Lanni Akul Kachakri Sagar. 6. Kayasta Sabat. Tribal organizations. The tribal organizations are active in MP, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Dharkand, West Bengal, and the northeastern states of Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, and so on. Their demands range from reforms to that of secession from India, and some of them are involved in insurgency activities. The tribal organizations include I. National Socialist Council of Nagaland, NSCN, 2. Tribal National Volunteers, TNU, in Tripura, 3. 3. People's Liberation Army in Manipur, 4. All India Bakhand, we, Tribal Son of Assam, 6. United Mizo Federal Organization, 9. Linguistic groups language has been so important factor in Indian politics that it became the main basis for the reorganization of states. The language along with caste, religion and tribe have been responsible for the emergence of political parties as well as pressure groups. Some of the linguistic groups are Andhuman Tarati Ayodhu, 3, Andhra Mahasabha, 4, Hindi Sahitya Sammelan, we, Nagri Prashrani Sabha, 6. Tech and ideology based groups in more recent times, the pressure groups are formed to pursue a particular ideology, i.e., a cause, a principle or a program. These groups include I, environmental protection groups like Narmada Bacha and Dolan, and Chico Movement, 2, democratic rights organizations, 3, civil liberties associations, 4, Gandhi Peace Foundation, we, women rights organizations, 11. Anomic groups Almond and Pavel observed, by anomic pressure groups being more or less a spontaneous breakthrough into the political system from the society such as riots demonstrations, assassinations, and the like. The Indian government and bureaucratic elite, overwhelmed by the problem of economic development and scarcity of resources available to them, inevitably acquires a technocratic and anti-political frame of mind, particularistic demands of whatever kind are denied legitimacy. As a consequence interest groups are alienated from the political system. 4. Some of the anomic pressure groups are, I, all India Sikh Students Federation. 2. Nava Nirman Samiti of Gujarat. 3. Naxalite Groups. 4. Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front, JKLF. We, All Assam Students Union. 6. United Liberation Front of Assam, ULFA. 7. Dal Khalsa. Notes and References 1. G. A. Allen and G. B. Coleman, Eds. The Politics of the Developing Areas, Princeton, 1970, p. 185. 2. J. C. Johari, Indian, Indian Government, Government and Politics, Vishal, 13th edition, p. 591. 3. Paul Kalena, Cast in India Since Independence, in Social and Economic Development in India by Vasu and Sishan, P110 4G Almond and GB Pavel Comparative Comparative 1972